Hello, I'm Steve Coogan. Hello, I'm Rob Brydon. Um, we uh, are the two main actors in the film Cock and Bull Story. And um, this is the commentary, a uh, chance to look... at some of the techniques we used in our approach to um, our parts. I, I myself play uh, Walter Shandy and Tristram Shandy, and I also play a version of myself, Steve Coogan. I play Uncle Toby Shandy and a version of myself. And in this commentary, we hope to maybe open the door, open the window on some of the cinematic techniques deployed uh, in the film. You look good mm. with a big nose, actually. This is the opening scene. Um, this was improvised in the makeup trailer um, as wet weather cover. And I think it's... Um, it's it, you, you very much expose yourself when you're doing improvisation. Yeah. Um, mm. Because unlike though. if uh, when you're playing a, a part of a, of a named character else. other than yourself, of course you can hide behind that mask. What? Whereas what? when what? you're playing yourself, you're kind of tearing down those barriers mm. and really opening yourself up. Right. I mean, mm. go further. Naked. Naked. emotionally naked. Emotionally naked. <sighs> um, that yeah, requires a lot of trust like between me. Performers mm. um, uh, to really, really open themselves. Yeah, I can't be. I can't be this serious for very long. I, 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 I find if it you quite want to give it a Dulux, difficult. Uh, mm. I mean, but but when we connected, um, when we learned to trust each other laughs, by being okay, to trust another actor yeah, yeah, to uh, to open up emotionally and physically. Mm. Mm. Ceiling. Um, <laughs> was was a very difficult <laughs> thing. Mm. It's about revealing yourself, trusting the other actor. I mean, there's I trust involved in this commentary. I, I had no idea until I arrived that, that we would do it naked. I, uh, I that, to me, was... I didn't understand it at first, but the, re no, the reason, But the reason I insisted on, on us being naked while we do it is to, if you like, simulate in a demonstrable way mm -hmm. the trust that's required yeah. between two men yeah. Yeah. when they're doing a commentary. I can't help but notice that you are wearing a belt. Um, that's a psychological thing. It's so that I know that I'm not totally naked. If you like, I'm I'm hanging on to that belt, as it were. Um, I mean, and conversely, I notice that you yourself are depilated, if I can use that, yes. that word. Well, and I would I would like to say it was a hasty depilation. Uh, it's not indicative of the usual standards of clearance that I would achieve. No, but I, I think it's clear, as a, I think it's it says very clearly to me. Um, you, you, you take a metro approach to grooming. Yeah. I think that's. Uh, I try and stay open. It's not a cameo. It's not a cameo. No. No, well, I mean, it, 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 and it's important to do that, you know. It's always it's important to be receptive to another actor's, you know, probing, emotional probing. This scene, the, the, the opening scene, is, is still continuing. It's about to end. And this sets up a, a tone for the film, would you say? I would. Um, here I am. Steve Coogan, that's me, walking towards the camera. An interesting gait to my walk. Um, it looks as if I'm slightly bow-legged. People think that's because I am. In actual fact, it took uh, months of practice. I had to ride a horse, even though I don't ride a horse in the film, just to try and increase that bowage uh, between the legs. Very pleased with the result. It's a confident walk. It's, it's the walk of... Mm. Well, it's the walk of Walter Shandy, mm. and it's straight away you're saying to the viewer, I am Walter Shandy. It's, it's, it's sort of an everyman walk, I like to think, and uh, yet without being uh, yet something enigmatic about it at the same time. There is mystery to it, certainly. Mm. I think I've seen been in screenings and people have sort of rubbed their heads. And think, how does he do it? How does he do yeah. it? Is, is he CGI'd? Is he actually on a treadmill? Yeah, how do they get this sort of... It's an, it's an, it's an amble-stroke gait. Mm. That mm. I've achieved. But now that's that's key. These are some other people in it. Um, yeah. We'll wait till they pass. Okay, <coughs> cows. They're from uh, cow agency. They do all kinds of different. Uh, some of them doubled uh, as buffalo in Dances with Wolves. That's right. They didn't stop talking about that, did they? No. Uh, one of them was in Gladiator, but cut. Yeah. In the final edit. I, I actually said to one of them, "What was going on?" And I said, "I said, who do you think you are?" Mm. Yeah, they're not very. Uh, they're quite low maintenance. Yeah. The other one was was no better. <coughs> hmm. Let's let's try and raise the tone from from just puns. Well, we? we raise it with Keely Hawes and Shirley Henderson, hmm. surely two of the finest actresses 
working on the world stage today. Um, absolutely. They're, they're proper actors. They don't try and they don't trivialise their work or, or, or attempt to be self-effacing by just doing a jokey commentary rather than taking the things seriously. Mm. You know, I mean, mm. they, they don't attempt to do that. They, they, the they sort of actor I despise is somebody who won't take it seriously. But that's I, you. I, that's, that's you're not taking it seriously. I, I hate myself. Because this is a big, big, you know, sort of Well, look at posturing. me in this. Look at me in this. This is not bad, this, for you, actually, I to like be this. I'm, I can't <coughs> help wonder if a producer, a big shot, Might is going to oh, watch this can do this seriously, and but, think, hang yeah. on a minute, Bryden, yeah. Gibson... Uh, I think I think slowly, slowly, catch your monkey. You know, learn to walk before you can uh, crawl. Um, because but I think you see the action hero there. Oh, uh, with me, certainly. Yeah. Hey, are you talking about this shot? Oh, the previous one with you. <coughs> with me. Oh, sorry. <coughs> I, I thought. Yeah, I think with this, I have a certain grace and dignity, and and a kind of. I'm not really pushing the comedy. I think you're very a accessible, like I say. Like I've this said has been a, this has been a theme of when we've been doing promotional work for this film. The one <laughs> overriding theme is Steve's belief that I am something of a lightweight, while he is a Brando-esque. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say Brando-esque, I'd, but I'd certainly say <laughs> I'd certainly think esque. I'm, I certainly think I'm esque. I think there's something of the. Uh, I've seen that on letters. It says Steve Coogan esque. esque. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Quite short hair there, and a lot of men can't wear that style. But you, you carry it off, whether you're long and curly or short. Thanks. You've got a. Now I hope you're not. I, know, I hope you're not complimenting me to lull me into a false sense of security, <laughs> so you can wallop me over the head with something that really takes the wind out of me. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I, um, I thought watching this, and we watched this the other night at the premiere. I, I think I appreciated your performance. More than ever, I think I was able to look past the mannerisms. Okay, like now I'm feeling. I see, I'm doing it now. Now I'm, I'm, now I'm feeling really kind of nervous. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I really was, and um, I do think I have the showier part mm. in this film. I do have the part that has the little under. Well, I'm quite, lines. I'm kind of reactive. Uh, I, I'm sort of quite. Re you, you are proactive. Yeah, uh, yeah. With a lot of your, as yourself later in the film. Mm. Mm. Yes, not um, as Uncle Toby, of course. He's rather. Uh, mm. Quite a passive sort of character. Hmm. Yeah, I think I did. I, um, I'm going to be serious for about two minutes, okay. um, like I am there. Um, yeah, it's really strange watching this because when, when we were in Norfolk shooting this, um, I really uh, it, watching it back is like watching a sort of a holiday photo album yeah. for me. I yeah. sort of think, oh, that was fun, and oh, we had a lovely time, and all those faces that you know, these are people we with a lot of these people we've worked with. You've worked with before, mm -hmm. and I've worked with. I mean, Ray Waring, who you saw there, Raymond. Raymond. Remember Raymond? Oh, hello, Raymond. Here. Hello, Raymond. I hope if he sees, he hears you in person, he will realise that that's a, an, it's affectionate. an affectionate thing. Well, I, sh I roomed or cottaged with uh, <laughs> <laughs> with Raymond. We lots of actors co cottage together. I, I find, <laughs> especially when they're on location. <laughs> Raymond and I shared a cottage, and uh, in which I left a pair of expensive trainers, and about six months later, phoned to see if they were still there, and they'd gone. <laughs> I was so lazy. I knew I'd left them there the minute I got back. I thought, oh, I'll phone tomorrow. I, I thought you were going to say later. you met Raymond and he was wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> I met Raymond and he, Raymond was faster than I remembered him. <laughs> That's a great model. Well done to the uh, wardrobe yeah, department absolutely. because it was above and beyond what they were expected to do. What, what? <laughs> the wardrobe? What, for the class, for the model? That's, my, that's the joke. I was saying, I was saying, I was saying, I was so sorry, but that's gone over people's heads because I didn't get it. Um, no, it, is, it was a great, right, model, right, right, great it? model, and just a wonderful place to film. I am not yet born. We imply that I haven't read the novel in the film, and I look nonplussed when Tony Wilson asked me about Widow Wadham. And, and I'm not proud of this, but the, the, the truth is that I, I ha, ha, hadn't read the novel when we made the film. And still haven't read mm. the novel. Yeah. Uh, me, me also. Um, mm. It was. Mm. It's a heck of a big book. I, I, I'm I'm now, not, I, I am going to read. Definitely. I'd like to read it. Um, it but I know, I know enough about. I mean, I've read everything. I've, I've read about. When I said I've read about the novel, it's true. I have. Mm. This is not one house, is it? This is several. Several houses that we back. intercut between. Yeah. I, I can't remember which house this is, but uh, um, I mean, mm. they are beautiful, beautiful. beautiful houses. But they're under the National Trust, and they're very, very pernickety. In fact, uh, we were in the house one evening, and uh, well, I was in there one day just shooting, and I was just leaning against a wall. I mean, literally just leaning my shoulder against a wall. And one of them came up and said, can you not lean on the wall, please? Which I thought showed great dedication to their well, there's, cause. There's and one scene where no, we, later not, on yeah. where we go into... Um, 
the when we were in the study and there was a little room we had to wait in to make our entrance with a little bed and I would sit on the bed and someone would come and say, could you not sit not on the bed? Not sit on the bed please, that's an old bed, it's historic. And I kept sitting on it deliberately then to annoy yeah. them. And, and then the next day Rob came in and, and a velvet rope had been placed around the bed. Yeah, and I think, did it say, have a sign that's saying do not sit? Yeah, Actually yeah. sellotaped to the yeah. sign, just in case you were wondering why the rope was mm. there. Um, again, people, I think, uh, I think fascism starts when you have people with too much time on their hands. Yeah, yeah. I think that you can draw a line from Mussolini, Hitler, National Trust. Yeah, well, we start calling the National Front, which is unfair because they do look after old houses and lots of, they are staffed Ooh, by the lots. National Front? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're which, which is unfair they're because you know they're, they're very well organised <laughs> and they only love their country yeah. after all. Yeah, the National Front, they just love their country. They you know, maybe they, they get a little over excited about things, but uh, well, as a political organisation should we knock enthusiasm, <laughs> you know? I mean, good lord. <laughs> at least they at least they're getting involved. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> This is one of my favourite jokes, and it may have just passed by when you said not, you know, it was just not long now, it, that, just that, two days. Yeah, that's a bit cheeky. That, I love that, though. I think that's great. Just two days. Another yeah. <laughs> two days. It's a bit sort of Eric Morgan. Yeah. yeah. There's another joke in it that's very kind of jokey jokey. Oh, well, there was, there was one before which was about the small print. That, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, oh, that, that small print, you always get that. I, I like that. Yeah, that's quite nice. That's, that's, Ten pounds to tell us that mm. it's wind that is inflating you. I do like... Um, Someone came up to me, because Michael uh, has pillaged music from several different films. Mm. When he made this, people may spot scores from various iconic films, and that's because this is a film about making a film, and Michael thought that to use the film from m music and scores from, from other uh, uh, films would be appropriate. Um, no room for Eye of the Tiger, though, I noticed. Mm, yeah, or Snow. nobody does it better. <laughs> 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 yeah, I wanted Carly Simon in it, but I was overruled. Um, yeah, and uh, of course, the other thing about using music for the films is uh, it's cheaper. Because <laughs> uh, someone kept coming up to me at the rap party saying, "Do you think you're Barry Lyndon?" I didn't know what she uh, meant. Yeah, because they, they use music from it. Yeah, that's, mm. a, that's a real that's a real pregnant belly. Katie was, pregnant was heavily time. pregnant. Not why she was cast, just a happy coincidence. Now this bit here, when we've been to screenings, the thing I do here never gets a laugh. On the day, I thought I was being hilarious. Do you ever get that? <laughs> yeah. No, you don't. No, 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 no. no. Well, you oh, think what you're doing is terrific, and uh, yeah. it never gets a laugh. No, no, that's very interesting. Um, that, that, yeah. Well, this bit, this bit where I, where I squat gets a laugh, but the bit where I, where I, um, there's a little mm. bit in a moment, mm. and it, where I say, shall we look at the fortifications, which I thought would get a laugh. Mm. I just... What's that? Do you think she's still laying egg? Yeah, I think it's just... Um, Quite fun scenes to do these, though, aren't they, Walter and Toby? Because yeah. they're just mm -hmm. two brothers, and there's a mm -hmm. clearly delineated. You're you're the authority. You're the you're mm -hmm. the leader, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm the sort of mm -hmm. slightly mm -hmm. shell shocked mm -hmm. guy. I quite yeah. enjoyed playing them. I see, Michael wanted actually wanted our roles to be I'm being serious again, to be uh, sort of sympathetic mm -hmm. with the way we are as ourselves later in the film, and uh, in actual fact, we. Uh, it, he, he wanted us to blur the differences between the characters. Yeah, so that the Rob Brydon character would be very deferential to the Steve mm. Coogan character in the way that Toby is to Walter. And that was written in the script, wasn't it? There were it scenes was, where I'm asking yeah. you about how to America and, and how to yeah. act and, and, and advice on yeah. stuff. And uh, to, in all seriousness, um, that just didn't seem... I, I, I jokingly say that Rob couldn't, couldn't find it within himself to be deferential to me in reality. And I think there's some truth in that. But in actual fact... Um, it, we, we, we just found it easier to be witty when there's a frisson and a kind yeah, of a competitiveness be. between us. Be. And, and what that means is, I think now, looking at the film, there's a slight kind of contrast between the way we are as, um, as yeah. characters in the film and the way we are. And that contrast, to me, makes it more interesting, yeah. actually. Yeah, because uh, yeah. there are still loads, loads of, mm -hmm. of mirror. There's lots of mirroring going on. All, all the stuff about children, for example, mm -hmm. is mirrored. Uh, yeah. in, in the in the kind of so-called real life stuff. Yeah. So I think yes, and it, and it, it is what it, um, what I felt about playing our relationship that we have done is that it gives it a, a bite, which because we have a sort of you know interesting sort of relationship with also the little quirks to it, and I, and I thought it'd be more interesting to have that on the screen. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Sorry, I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> have a look at Raymond's feet here and see if he's if he's wearing Nike trainers. That, okay. That, <laughs> One careful owner. <laughs> Imagine if I saw him watching, what was he on his feet? <laughs> I, you know, I really like this map thing where they sort of have the little explosions on yeah, the map. Yeah, I, I like think that's too. really, really good. People talk about King Kong, but I mean, for effects. For special effects, yeah, I mean, what's his name? 
Is it Peter Jackson? Uh, Gordon Jackson. Yeah, Peter Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah the director. I mean, look, what's this? Watch, watch. Look at this. What's this? Peter what's this? Jackson, Whoa. are you watching? Are you watching, Peter Jackson? You can stick King Kong up your. Uh, yeah. If it. Yeah, that's and, and, fit, and Mel Gibson, are you watching? And look at that, because that yeah. castle in the background, that's an effect. That's not really there. Is it really? Well, I don't remember it being there, do you? Oh, that's rather clever. <laughs> oh, let's watch this pipe. Oh, look at that, see? Ooh, that's. Uh, that's like, oh, it's a map, and now it's reality, and it makes you go, oh, so we're watching a strange, interesting, quirky <coughs> film. That says independent film. That's got it written all over it. <laughs> it says low budget, independent Now, this film. looks good. Look, that, looks, that looks expensive. I remember this. I was being it does carried look, it by... Does look, it does look pretty students. expensive, actually, but, you know, I don't, it, yeah, it does. You know. I mean, by the way, if any... If any, if any oh, I'm just going to use an opportunity. If any American <clears throat> in, uh, sort of auteur-type directors are watching this commentary, um, I'm speaking directly to you. I'm talking about... Wes Anderson, David O. Russell, Alexander Payne, Alexander Payne um, and uh, um, um, hang on. Oh, P Paul Thomas Anderson, Michael Bay, Michael Bay. Uh, and if not you, really, because he makes big films. Oh, that's right. Yes, that's right. That's, that's right. Yeah, yes, and I don't. And uh, we don't care. No, we won't. We don't want to. Him as well. We just want to work. Right. Yeah, yeah, we want yeah. to work. Yeah, but, <clears throat> but ideally, though, ideally, that would be the first list. That, 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 those, those Michael Bay as a fallback. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, we really would like to. Uh, to you know, to, we, we are available for work, and yeah. uh, well, I me, mean, I am. I don't know about Rob. Rob's, Rob's. I'm, fa I'm fairly available. Fa Rob's fairly available. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm obviously, you know, I'm, bit, I'm picky, but I, yeah. but, but any of you guys, I have huge respect for. You know, if you really want to hire me, I. All right, let's just clarify. I, I'm busy this week, so this week is chocker. But certainly, there, there no, there's no time on this. You can't. There's no timing. So, anyway, I often find anyway, they find this a bit. They find, might find this a bit smug. So, so let's just start talking about the film again. But I do think genuinely it's a good idea. Just to put it people, out there. people assume that because I tell you what they do, especially for your backgrounds in comedy, and that you're you're involved, you 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 you, you help create yeah. a lot of the work you do, yeah. as as Rob and I do independently. Um, people think that you don't want to do their stuff, or that you're not. That you don't want to work for other people, or they the think you always get your it's own the exact stuff. Opposite. You, 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 you think I'm so to. tired of having to write my own stuff. I just want someone else to, to have, you know, work with me. Like this, you know, this was fun. <clears throat> just poorly paid. Very poorly paid. But that's not the scum of that because you think, well, Pete, no, nurses are poorly paid, not bloody actors. That's true. So that's, that's not true. Uh, let's not go down that road. Not just nurses. Although, you know, sometimes I do feel, you know, you know and, and minors, although I have to say, sometimes when you're acting, it is like a bloody coal face. <laughs> and you're wearing a nurse's uniform, so you're ill-equipped for the coal face. You're yeah. getting the worst of both worlds. Yeah. That's Dylan Moran. Dylan yeah, Moran. Who you may know, Great you comic know from, from Black Books and his stand-up work. And wasn't there a scene in this where he's meant to be asleep and he actually was asleep? He nod, nodded off in a chair, and uh, in fact, well, I'll tell you what, when it, when it comes up, I'll point it out. Oh, it's not coming yet, is it? OK. No, um, I'll, I'll point it out. Um, this is... The forceps scene. Hmm? Gently and close. It's, uh, I must admit, to be really honest, when I'm watching the film, uh, I do sort of think... Uh, I mean, there is a part of me with the greatest respect to Michael that I do think during this 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 first half hour of the mm. film, I do. A part of me is sort of thinking, get on, get with, on it, with it, you bloody oaf. Yeah. Get on with it, you oaf. Yeah. We've seen enough old buildings and costumes now. That's uh, well. I'll tell you what, because we've watched it loads of times with different audiences at different things, yeah. and sometimes I feel like initially when I watched it, I did, but I find I think see. I get lost between the edits because you remember we saw like an early cut of it and I mm. think at the end that was better and, and this going back and forth yeah. mm. there was a point where oh we're not going back again to before he was born are we yeah. mm. but I think mm. then he changed mm. that you see um, I actually I actually liked uh, this some yeah. of the some of the some of the edits are not kind of comic edits I noticed they're not comedic no, they're not, edits they're not comedic edits and sometimes I, I go oh no no oh, hang no, no, on no, no. a bit longer ha, yeah. or, or cut a bit sooner cut a bit sooner yeah or let, let, let leave a little moment there to yeah. for, for the audience to laugh I know there's a couple of things that, that line I mentioned earlier the one about um, you go, and look I, at the, imba, imba, the fortifications and I did a little look yeah. no, all right, I, I haven't seen it but I remember at the time thinking well you need mm. a little look mm. to kind of reinforce mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. yeah I do uh, I think but then I, in a way I think that's good that Michael's not that he's restraining himself from because sometimes when you do a comic cut, you reveal the hand of the director. Yeah, this you is a funny of, line. Can I just say which you improvised, which is uh, I'm not finished with that about as you get up because I mean, nobody gets this when they watch it mm, at the screenings. True. But there's a lovely line. Watch now. What's happened to my son? He gets up to go. Here he goes. I haven't finished. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm going to be scavenging <laughs> your food. I think that's nice. Um, 
But no, that's it. Or is that it? Is that when uh, he, is, was, had he been it? asleep? Uh, no, I don't think no, it no, was no. that. Yes, uh, this is it. Uh, mess up with the machinery. Yeah, he was genuinely <laughs> asleep when he said that line, and we woke him up with the camera rolling. And ah, consequently, so that's him there, like consequently, that's him just having woken up. Consequently, it's one of the, it, it's, it's one of the performances of his life. the the Dante, Pythagoras, yeah. Newton, Alexander the Great. Music. But I'm getting ahead. Could of never myself. afforded this. We scored it ourselves. I'm not yet. I say ourselves. <laughs> I don't. If I'm you and I don't know one of our scores. <laughs> yeah. Well, someone just give us a break, please. <laughs> You on the tambourine, <laughs> me on the acoustic guitar. Get off, get off. My son is not yet born. I like this. I'm already, already I'm exhausted. exhausted. Oh, here we go. Oh. This is it. Should we go and see the fortifications? See, I did a little mm. guff. They cut there, and I do yeah. a little surprise in the yeah. eyebrows. But as I say, if you reveal that, that sometimes comic cuts reveal the hand of the director. Suddenly, the, the director becomes another <coughs> character. Mm. Uh, well, a very obvious character, and, uh, because you feel the com com he's complicit in the comedy. And the way Michael directs this, I don't mm. think you do feel. No, I think that's very true. That he's yeah. somehow yeah. pointing his finger towards where the yeah. joke is. So you, what you, you then get is you get a nice kind of friction, or you get like, a nice tension of the perhaps to a degree the two styles kind of going against each other, do you know what I mean? As opposed to just going with the flow yeah. of, of a comedy, mm. as it were. The philosopher, the greatest lawgiver. The Very greatest windy, I remember this day. It was, but beautiful skies. I mean, Norfolk's just absolutely oh, yeah. delightful. The child should be called Stars yeah. at night. Yeah. Comparable only to the outback in Australia, I would say, in my experience. It, it, but really? Night oh, yeah, well, if you go to the outback in Australia... I'm sure night, you get big skies. It's, oh, it's so awesome. unbelievable. Mm. I mean, it's mm. like something like Star Wars. But, mm. but Norfolk as well is it's, gorgeous. It's the, <clears throat> it's the topography, isn't it? It's, quite, it's uh, unique in, in England for being so flat. Um, sir, it's the baby. It's the baby, sir. He is as black as my... Um, oh, black as Very good waking up acting there. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. cheers. Yeah. Cheers. It's all right, mate. Here, Lovely rooms, wood yeah. panelling. So now, now um, Shirley, Shirley Henderson here is very good because even uh, she normally she has a slightly larger part than this, but um, Michael had to twist her arm, and I begged her a, a little bit as well. Um, but she always does something interesting uh, with something small, and so it's often difficult to, uh, if you like, you know, make make your mark with. Um, yes, it is difficult because it's hard to get into mm. the flow of things. I mm. worked with Shirley on a on a BBC. Um, costume drama called The Way We Live Now with David Suchet, directed by David Yates, who's mm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Shirley came to the read... You know when you do a read-through? You're yeah. not really there yet, are you? Mm -hmm. you're no. sort of, she, at the read-through, mm -hmm. I was blown away. She was completely in this character, inhabiting this character. Yeah. Uh, it was quite an extreme portrayal. She was fantastic. Yeah, she says, you are, of course, talking over David Walliams there. Deliberately. Oh, I see. Yeah, I was wondering yeah, that. Because yeah. David, I know, is a very good friend of yours. He's, he's, he's a sort of a peripheral friend of mine. Yeah, he's a very um, good friend of mine. But we, I mm. met him through you doing that. Because the three of us did a film. Cruise yeah. of the Gods. Cruise of the Gods. So the BBC has only ever shown once for some reason. Perhaps someone at the BBC who might be watching this would like to explain that to us. Mm. Considering it's got three of the top comedy performers in the country and it's sitting there, I think with a re repeat already paid for, you know, get it out. Oh. For God's sake. Having said that, it is available on Amazon. Is so it? you know, it's available on Amazon. If you, you want to see put it. it out there, put it out. Can't you, you know the, the, the Easter on a bank holiday? Or it's, it's a it's a funny film. You do wonder about some of the dross they repeat. I know, I know, I know. Let's, Even let's not that, go that, there. Let's you know, not go it's there. Not, no. 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 Um, Anyway, David, who you just saw there before, who reappears later. In, uh, yeah. As we record this commentary, is probably the biggest one half of the biggest just thing in comedy, comedy in Britain. In Britain at the moment, which is uh, Little Britain. Yeah. Um, Absolutely huge. Yeah. I was once. I've never been huge. I've always had a nice. But you know what? That's not. There's, there's a method in that. Mm. Henry's, 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 Henry, Henry Normal, who's my business partner, runs uh, Baby Cow. Who have? Uh, Henry's uh, uh, one of the exec producers credited on this. Uh, Henry. Um, uh, sorry, I'm distracted by my own shagging here. Um, <laughs> I wasn't really, obviously, uh, but. Um, no, he said that the thing is never to peak. Yeah, he said yeah. that that's the secret, never <coughs> peak. Mm. Um, and I think that's something you're very good at. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of true, though. I've never had, I've never had a big hit, and, and a lot of you, know, you, it's, you have. It, David it's has. absolutely true because it really means it means you have, uh, you will have longevity. Um, you won't seem, you won't be seen as a shadow of your former self. <laughs> At shambling along, holding a shopping bag, having having to sort of do errands that other that in previous times other people would have done for you. 
Anyway, this yeah. this thing with Keeley was very it was very very, uh, um, and I mean this in a, the nicest possible way, accommodating in, in these these scenes because she was in actual fact pregnant. Oh, I know. Uh, that's a, that's a very nice body double. Um, that's not Keeley, is it? No, she was pregnant. She, she she's got a big 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 round oh. bump in, in the middle of her. I mean, she's gorgeous, of course. Keeley is extraordinarily beautiful. She is very beautiful be and said. great style and, yeah, and a lot uh, of poise, poise and all the rest of it. You know, one of her parents used to be Rod Stewart's chauffeur. Really? Yeah, her dad. That explains a lot. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. That's true, though. That's true. <laughs> and I, I, don't, I, I believe you. I don't think, no, that's yeah, impossible. I would have thought you'd be a little shocked. I mean, there can't be many people who can say their dad was What did I say? There's a story about this little story. It's got time. By the way, she was heavily pregnant here, so we had, and she, so it was very... And obviously, I was trying to make this vaguely amusing. So no this need not, to. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is, please, Rob. There's, there's, um... <laughs> oh, Rob. Uh, no, this is, um, very, uh, um, the way I'm sort of doing this, this moment, I'm trying. It's not how I normally would, would do that. <laughs> trying to be funny. I'm trying to be amusing. I'm holding um, back from yeah. saying so many things at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the moment's passed. Good. <clears throat> um, so where were we? You uh, were going to talk about um, oh, a story about um, about Keeley. No, no, no. About Rod Stewart. Show that Rob St- Rod Stewart. Apparently, um, Kate Robbins, who's Paul McCartney's um, niece. Uh, she. Uh, this is where we. So this is where suddenly you go. I don't want to worry about no, that. No, Carry on about okay, Paul McCartney. Okay. Hey, Paul McCartney's, uh, uh, Kate Robinson said, oh, he puts all his family up in a big hotel. And they go, oh, uh, the next morning she's at the staff say, oh, honestly, they're really rotten. They all em- they're, they're all his extended family. They all empty the mini bars, you know, when, when he's, he's picking up the tab. Um, and he, uh, the receptionist said uh, uh, to Kate Robbins, she said, um, oh, she said, yeah, she said, yeah, now it's terrible. She said, Rod Stewart's family is just the same. <laughs> I just uh, had this image of <coughs> oh, this huge extended family of Rod Stewart. He came to see you, didn't he, Paul McCartney? You live. He did. He came to see my show, and afterwards he did a Wayne's World thing and bowed down his head and hands and said, "We're not worthy. We're not worthy." Wow. I mean, that was a seminal moment for me. But it, was it, what it ranks was alongside it ranks alongside sitting in a hot tub with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jackie Chan. Are you going to tell the uh, Special no. Olympics? No. All right. No. What about uh, McCartney's critique of your show? Should we take this nose off now? Or I can't just critique it. Yeah, oh, what did you say? A little bit rude. A little bit blue. A little bit blue. A <laughs> little bit blue. <laughs> no one says that anymore, do they? No. It's a bit blue. Yeah. A bit... I might call my uh, next live tour that. <clears throat> a little bit blue. Kelly MacDonald. Ah, oh, there you go. I mean, she's fantastic. It's got the great thing about this is that the, the fic, this sort of mixture of fact and fiction. Do you know what? I actually, you know, I actually sometimes do, I think. <sighs> If I was in a better place psychologically, I, I could have had a wife like Kelly McDonald. But um, yeah. instead, I'm uh, in a bit of a model. Oh, but you, come on, you're getting there one day at a time. Come on, now's not the time. Steve, Steve, now's not the time. Not, don't get emotional now. <laughs> I just started, yeah. started we- weeping on a commentary. Get it together. Get it together. <laughs> start, start opening up on a commentary emotionally, really kind of like in a slightly unseemly way. And then sort of starting to go go down the road, how how you know life started to fall apart. <laughs> do a Barry Moore, do the mumbling, not you know, the audience die. Please, God, please, slash, please, you know. please, 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 please. Benedict um, Wong. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so now, see, but still the thing I don't understand. At the end, and I'm, maybe I'm being thick, in the screening room, you see you and uh, Kelly. So was this acting as well? What? What do you mean? Oh, I see. Do you know what I mean? I think that third level is a bit sort of... Oh, does that Weird. make sense? No, it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't, does it? It doesn't bear analysis, that. Well, the thing is, I think this film, to be honest, I think this film is um, quite deep, right? But if, I think if you, if, you, if you sort of claw away at the surface of this film, there's very interesting issues, right, that you can examine. Yeah. But if you claw any further, you realise there's actually not a lot there. It's like Lost, isn't it? <laughs> you can enjoy Lost, but then after all, you actually... You go, it doesn't yeah, make sense. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's what I mean. It's it's uh, it's it's um if you don't if you don't examine it too closely, <laughs> oh, it seems sense. it does seem quite clever. But he, but because it doesn't make sense, does it? I don't know. Someone said someone said to me, um, I know I, I actually I actually like the fact that it's formal. Someone said said to me on the night actually someone on the first night party came up to me and said uh, the film doesn't work. They were drunk and they said you know it doesn't work. It doesn't actually make sense. This film doesn't work. They said to me and I was I found that saying well they were drunk and they said you know it doesn't work. It doesn't actually make sense. This film doesn't work. They said to me and I was and I felt like saying. Oh, why do you have to spoil it by going and say, <laughs> saying that? Anyway, um, I, but, I mean, part of me, I, I just think it's... She said, oh, it's funny, it's very funny all the way through, but it doesn't work. I said, well, no, it doesn't have an arc. It's not, it doesn't have a nice, neat ending, like a kind yeah. of... Uh, 
Uh, and it doesn't really have a proper orthodox structure. Someone said uh, in one review said that Steve Coogan goes from being a self-obsessed asshole to a slightly less self-obsessed asshole. I think that's enough of an arc for me. <laughs> by your standards, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's, Noah's, that's Noah's Ark. That's a bridge. <laughs> no, Noah's Ark. Oh, Noah's Ark, yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. That's a hell of an arc. That's Noah's Ark. That's Noah's Ark. Yeah, I suppose, I say, yeah, because you've done the pun thing. Yeah, yeah no, that's, uh, I was trying to go with the literal arc. Humpback bridge thing. <clears throat> now, this is, um, I like this scene. I wouldn't have liked to have been suspended upside no, down. Like I, work, I work with it. I think I overact slightly on the on no, being pulled out. Oh no! See, I, no, I love that because that's exactly how I'd be. Because it really, you do, you, you kind of. There's that odd thing of trying to keep dignity. And, oh, yeah. no! I, I don't. I laughed my head off the first really? time I saw that. I thought yeah. I was. Um, it's fine, Steve. Right. Let me see this. Get me. It's when I start going. Oh yeah, yeah. Now there's there's actually a, there's a fart joke when I get turned up uh, earlier that Michael's put in and he goes. Oh, I've heard. That. I've never noticed. It's that. not. It, it's so quiet. Yeah. That it looks like. No one ever laughs at it. It goes. It's a slight kind of fart noise when I'm upside down. On the way, on the way in, it's like earlier. There's an odd sound bit I noticed. At and the it's premiere. like I think what well, I think it never gets laughed because people go, well, "Oh, is that a fart?" And it's they're not quite sure whether it's a joke. Or I've never noticed it, but there is an odd sound thing earlier on around the time when you go into the see the lawyer about the uh, married about the birth contract. There's a somebody goes yeah. like that as the scene changes. I noticed that on uh, the other night. So the moment has mm. passed now. There's no point being. Yeah. I don't know, I noticed that chap in the background there, because I think he's one of the supervisors. He gives a really good look when I say I'm not doing it naked. Never noticed it before. Naomi Harris, of course, who is... The best just, driver in the world. <laughs> she has... Uh, she, <laughs> yeah, we did the driving shots of these. She's coming up slightly later, but she's... Um, she is absolutely gorgeous. She's just divine. Um, As is Mark Williams. Mark Williams there. He, very funny. He had a small part playing the sort of the supervisor of the background though, artist and did a lot of work, actually, which shows, even though you don't see yeah. it on screen, he did a lot of background research for it and it really shows. You see him improvising later on yeah. and I find him totally believable um, and because he's, he's known as a comic actor in this country. In actual fact, he's properly trained and uh, he, he's, he went to a proper, proper posh university. And, and that's uh, Elizabeth Barrington, who is fantastic. Yeah, she's, she's also very good. Wardrobe. It's, yeah. we, we know the calibre of the actors on this, really, supporting two... Two idiots. <laughs> two idiots. It's sort of... It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting technique in filmmaking. <laughs> yes, it is. <clears throat> it's get, get the heavyweights <laughs> to, to prop, prop up, up. Yeah. two people who don't quite know what they're doing. <clears throat> um, that's, that's, that actually starts to sound like real actors then, didn't it? Like, don't quite know what we're doing. We actually, in fact, we think we're... We actually think we're quite good. <laughs> you know, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> we really don't quite know what we're doing. I mean, we're sort of well, grabbing around well, in the dark. Well, that's the same as one, I should one tell really, <laughs> one, one hopes one. I'm absolutely one hopeless does it. and run chap. I just make it up as I go along. I really do, yes. It's really... I mean, fancy getting paid for this sort of thing. Really. That's that it's, mock, it's, mock it's, yeah. uh, modesty. Mock modesty that a lot of actors try and wear on their sleeve as a kind of a I've been cloaking of device. I've been guilty of it. I, 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 you and me both, Rob. We've both <laughs> been guilty of it. Let's be fair. Well, Steve was on the radio the other day talking about oh, this shit. film, and he said there's a woman, you were part of a panel, and this woman said, uh, she was American, she said, can I just say, is Steve, you're a lot better looking in real life than you are on the screen. And Steve went, no, 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 And it was a real actress. It was delicious. Nobody else would have noticed it. I spat out my cornflakes. Yeah, it was uh, <coughs> a moment of weakness. No, it was a moment you're being human. You're it was a human. moment of weakness. Ask Hugh Grant. Um, and now, but, uh, uh, See, I, you, you could take Mark's character off, couldn't you, and do a whole thing mm, you could actually. about him. Yeah, you could Naomi him. again. Absolutely. Now, Naomi was... Uh, she's a brilliant uh, actress, I think, because she, she, she is genuinely kind of real... She is a, I, mean, I don't mean this in a patronising way. She genuinely has a kind of real method to what she does. Mm. Um, and she was a bit offish with me, and I couldn't quite tell whether it was the method or she actually thought I was a bit of a dick, if I can use that mm. word. And um, I suppose it was a bit, a bit of both. both. <laughs> No, I, 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 the thing is, the rap party, she was really, really friendly and nice to me. And I thought, and I said to her the other night at the, the opening, I said, I was really straight, worried about the way you were. She said, I was just, um, she told me she was just method acting, but you, you never get to the bottom of these things. Now, this is Tony Wilson, who, of course, um, I played memorably, uh, memorably uh, in cult independent film circles. <coughs> yeah. Famously in, in cult independent film circles. I played Tony Wilson in the film 24 Hour Party People. Which was a look at that whole mad Chester scene, wasn't that it? That whole mad Chester. Of course, I, I grew up in Manchester. I know, this is Rob um, just inventing. I don't know where it all comes from. You know. um, uh, doing all sorts of... Uh, I don't know. Uh, I know, 
afraid as well. Sounds with great confidence, though. Um, <laughs> so it's, it really does sound like it has the ring of authenticity. I, um, and when I watch this, sometimes there's a part of me that's going, "This is lies, damned lies." <laughs> Um, and it's defamatory. Imagine if I sued you for, for that scene, <laughs> tried to sue you over that scene. Tony's very good, isn't he? Tony is good, yeah. He's very good. Um, that kind of swacking my fingers. Because people aren't me. always good when they're playing themselves, so they can get very kind of wooden and uh, stiff, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, he's, 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 he's very good. He's, he's um, you know. He actually came to my house when I was uh, when my aunt had a birthday party there in 1976, and I was 10 years old, and I was sent to bed early. And I remember looking down through the banister mm -hmm. and seeing the hall door open, and people coming. He was a local television presenter. And I remember seeing him walking down the hall, going, "There's Tony Wilson." And little did I know, as I was there in my pajamas, aged 10 years old, that 30 years later. I'd be playing him in a feature film about his life that began in 1976. So, in actual fact, the year uh, that the film began, when I, uh, I was playing him in the year 1976, was the very year that he came and visited my house. So, in some strange way, perhaps in the film, he could have visited my house and you would have seen a child version of me yes. watching myself playing Tony Wilson. Perhaps Daniel Radcliffe from Harry Potter could have played you as a young Steve with magical tendencies for comedy. He was a wizard of comedy. All right, let's move on. This is getting dull. Um, I tell you what, the other thing is the costumes. I mean, the costume is, it's not over or nay. It's not, it's not like, you know, the, the thing I like, Michael said, I remember trying the costumes, and he said, I don't want it all, because the costume is, obvious, for obvious reasons, as well as designers want to sort of show their wares. So yeah. they go, oh, I can put a little thing here, and a little ribbon <coughs> there, and a little bit here, and just finish a little bit off there. And he just said, just keep it plain. He didn't, yeah. so you're not distracted by the production values. No, As you often have costume drives, you're going, ooh, that looks nice. And you think, well, you forget about the, what people are saying to each other. Um, I like the coat I'm wearing there. I actually wear that coat. I've got that coat with me today. Did you have it, haven't you? Yeah, I have. It's hanging up. And uh, it's my coat. So some of the costume there provided by me. A lot of the clothes I wear in this are my, the brown corduroy jacket that I wear so convincingly. Yeah. Mine. That's uh, not mine. I don't have a I like my, those trainers I'm very fond of, too, and, 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 and the jeans. I've still got the jeans and the trainers. The jeans have got a rip in them now, but they are the same jeans. I do still have them. But that really was the spot where we would get picked up at the yeah. end of the day, I mean, wasn't this, it? it was, yeah. That's why, it's so, that's why I'm saying it's so... It's, so it, 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 yes, it's like looking back at a, at a little uh, home movie of a little vacation of yeah, it's you a, it, it's, you sort of, yeah, I sort of get confused sometimes. Mm. I get confused sometimes. Now, this is, this is when we were... Naomi, we're not on a low loader here. Naomi is genuinely, genuinely driving. driving the car. And I'm... And I am... <laughs> that's a, that's, I'm not really on the phone. That's, that's acting. Yeah. Um, but... Um, but you know that we had... So, so Naomi, by her own admission, would say that she's a kind of erratic driver. And we had a car... For shots like this, you have a police car behind you making sure that no cars get near you and a policeman mm. in front of you, yeah? And she said to me that the pol policeman behind us said, if I'd been driving behind you normally, I would have pulled you over. Yeah, I think I would have put... She, she was really scared. There's one point where I actually do point my finger and go, uh, watch the road. Yeah, yeah. And I was genuinely meaning watch the road. And, but I made sure my hand was in frame so that it could work for the action too, as it were. Because you're always, always thinking. Always thinking. Use it, work with it. Don't mm. see it as a problem, work the problem. Mm. Turn the problem into a solution. Yeah. You know, um, and other uh, sort of uh, self-help book type titles about business. Feel the feel feel the danger, was it? Feel the, feel the, feel fear. the fear, feel the fear and do, it. do fear. it anyway. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Yeah. Because what is fear? <clears throat> It's. You say I'm afraid. I say I'm excited. Yeah. Well, the thing is, when I was asked to do this, this is. I felt the fear. I did it anyway because I thought playing myself, behaving like a bit of an idiot sometimes. Um. And I did it anyway. That Sola and Pythagoras and Ptolemy. Not a lot to say. At this not a lot to say with from frankly. Lovely boy. Why not you? I think that's brilliant. No, I love the um, dedication that Walter yeah. shows to his son. Really, I identify with that. And then, you know, like, Tristram grows up, and he's nothing like his <clears> At the end of the film, when we're sitting in the screen room, I say, didn't, uh, didn't I do more Pacino in the car? And that was a genuine <laughs> inquiry from me, because yeah. I thought I did. And yeah. I genuinely thought yeah. it was rather funny. Really, I, I genuinely thought it was too much. And I did actually say to Michael, I said, there's too much Pacino in the back of the car. And, I said, and Michael went, yeah, I think, I think you're right. Because he, he did go on too much, and 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 yeah, um, and I did ask him to to take that out, and Rob did notice it, and that, that worked its way into the film. 
Um, I have to save. Now, I'll see my point my finger there. Yeah. So slow down. I'll be careful. Not slow down. Just speed up. Um, but she, look, she, she's, she's, she's I mean, not she's, looking she's, at the She's road. literally. She's I mean, when you. she's looking at me like that, she's she's literally like I'm thinking, crikey, you know. Uh, please, you know, it's, it's staggering actually. Uh, yeah, but um, so gorgeous. All these beautiful women. None of them would go near me with a barge pole. That's the that's tragedy. For me. See, that's a bit of reverse psychology you're using there, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Oh, right, you think that some women will go, oh, he's not that exactly, bad. Exactly, yeah. Whatever yeah. it takes, whatever works. I'm the sort of Tony Blair pragmatic approach to <laughs> domestic <laughs> politics apply to my life, which is whatever works. Don't get bogged down in any kind of theory or dogma. Just be adaptable. Tell us about your friend who came and... Uh <coughs> came and uh, Brendan Brendan my friend yeah. uh, is a uh, volunteer um, diver and he he supervised the wa the water bit where he saw people in the water mm. in his scuba suit um, did it for free and from Brendan to Kieran Kieran O'Brien Kieran O'Brien here uh, actor who's in Nine Songs got his clothes off had real sex in the film Nine Songs so on Michael's, camera Michael's rude film Michael's uh, saucy Mi film well Michael yeah trying to do you know a very brave attempt to show real sex on camera. People don't say brave about porn, do they? It's a very brave thing to do. Uh, they just go, that's rude. That's uh, a brave collection you have. <laughs> <laughs> that's a brave collection you have in the, uh, in the attic there. Brave collection of brave work. Um, um, so this, now this is the thing that slightly annoys me. Is, the hotel, as depicted, is in gorgeous. This film. Look at this. This is like a, a house dressed as a sort of snazzy, postmodern, yeah. you know, trendy, uh, alongside old sort of furniture, eclectic look hotel. But it's not a hotel. We had stayed in either stayed in a little cottage, which was rather nice. But most of the time, spent staying in bed and breakfast, perfectly comfortable, but actually nowhere near yeah. the opulent. Uh, yeah. Uh, level of this would be a lovely home. hotel. They ought to convert it into a hotel. I know it's really, really uh, quite lovely. Um, it's a fantastic fireplace. Do you remember standing by the fire? We used to just oh. throw in loads of logs oh. in the fire. Huge mm. fireplaces. Mm. Wonderful. Now there's so Ashley, Ashley Jensen. Jensen. Ashley Jensen, who's in the office, uh, not, not the extras. office, sorry, extras. When we made this, of course, nobody knew her. Uh, no, because the extras was about to. Uh, she hadn't, hadn't made had, it. No, she hadn't even shot it. Then. She hadn't even shot no, it. No, 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 no. She hadn't. Really? Well, that's what she told no, me. No, 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 no. This was November two oh oh four. Yes, so. it was. And they shot extras in the spring of 05, I think. Did they? I think no, they did. Yes, they did, and it went did out. They? Yes, they did, and then it went out in yes. the summer of 05. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. It got okay. repeated in the autumn. Yeah, all right. <laughs> this is about this. It's not about extras, you know. That's, yeah, that's, but, you know, I mean... It's, can we enjoy our 15 minutes of fame? Yeah, but as you're saying, Cruise of the Gods never got a... Re oh, it doesn't matter. Don't matter. Roger Allen. Roger Allen. Another gr really Woefully good... Woefully underused. But the thing is, the people turn out for Michael. Yeah. God, why knows. Do you think God that knows it's not for us. <laughs> God knows it's not for us. No, but, um, but why is it? Because I think it's because Michael has a lot it's of... It's just, you know, kind of there's so many good actors who really don't get the opportunity to do really interesting work. And there's a real sort of... I think people pay their bills and they do this kind of work and they do sort of stuff on TV that's sort of interesting. And then when Michael comes along, just in genuine, that's, that's me doing proper acting about being embarrassed about... Um, about... Uh, um, what's the word? Indiscretions in my... In my uh, private life that were worked into the film that I was had mixed feelings about but then I thought I'll oh, sod it feel the fear and do it anyway uh, <laughs> which explains a lot of actions in my life I was about to uh, say I know, that. I, know, I know you were that's why I said it first but, uh, <coughs> um, these, uh, I think this could have been funny I mean it's interesting but I think it could have been funny it's, it's, it, it, I always get to laugh when I say it, but you play an aid worker who, who loses memory and falls in love with his own daughter. daughter. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. sounds like a sort of a... And the, the, the two films line, don't you have to have two films to do that? gets a laugh if it's, if it's a kind of industry yeah. crowd. Mm. And most people yeah. aren't. Oh, do you hear my stomach rumble? Yeah. Normally, um, I, this is a kind of warts and all approach to commentary. So if you hear a stomach rumble, it's real. Yeah, it's a, it's a plus. This is a nice scene coming up. Look at Mark... Williams's face when Naomi starts doing the uh, well. First of all, he asks you for a photo, which is quite yeah. nice. The I think there's a joke here that, that that doesn't work ever. Yeah. Oh, there's a genuine 18th century soldier, and I go, oh, you don't you don't look uh, you, 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 you don't look old enough or something like that. Oh, you, yeah, you wouldn't expect that to get a laugh, would you? Well, just a, a genuine 18th century soldier. You know, you don't look old, old enough. You know, um, oh, it's just a small, you know, just it's a titter. But what's look at him the way he's looking at you? Yeah, he does it really well. Yeah, it's really believable. That's very convincing. Yeah. And watch now. Watch. And look, he grabs you. This mm. is good. Watch now. Watch yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he gives a massive smile. <laughs> <laughs> he does that really well. 
was a, a Jackie Chan yeah. uh, film. Uh, uh, and so now you've got yeah. Naomi. So mm. there's, you've got a real yeah, okay. uh, smorgasbord of, of reactions to look at here. Yeah. You can. You, now this is what's good about the cinema. It's generally about the cinema because you can see. I mean, on a, or a good high def TV. Um, is that you can pick out whichever reactions you... Exactly, you can look at Mark, you can look at you, you can look at me. Yeah. Look at Mark, he <laughs> tries to keep a smile. Yeah. You know, it's about the impossibility of actually connecting with another human being. Mm. I really like this. Yeah. Yeah, 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 look, look at Mark. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. Yeah. look, he's changing. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the more but they hit he's... and hit, yeah. hey, actually the less they mm. impact. It's... He's wondering what to make of her now. Really moving, actually. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. See you later. Okay, see you later. See you later. <laughs> He's looking like, what was that? Yeah. What was all that about? <laughs> yeah. Look, um, he's still um, wondering. <laughs> Fassbinder. 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 Mm. I've got a list of the men that fell. Oh. See, this kind of thing, where you, you, you just think, oh, God, what? You know, a list of the names of the people. You'd just want nothing to do with that, would you? You'd want to say, oh, for yeah. goodness sake. Yeah. And you'd have to kind of humour him. And then they mm. shout out their names to each other oh. in the heat of the battle. I do miss, you know, I just, I feel nostalgic at this time already. I think, oh, it's such fun. Yeah. It was great fun, wasn't it? It was, it was. Yeah. I, th I thought it was good. I thought it really was. was Think about when you uh, lead the life of an actor, you, you sort of have a very close, intense relationship with people on location where you sort of live in each other's pockets for a few weeks. And it's great fun. You do sort of form these friends and bond, bonds and friendships. And, but uh, then, of course, it's all over and you're all scattered mm. elsewhere and go on to different jobs and things. So it kind of, it, it sort of engenders uh, a lot of insecurity because you're sort of very intense uh, relationships and then, and then sort of spreads apart. Don't, don't get, don't, Steve, it's all right. <laughs> No, but, it, but, but, no, but, it, but it, that that it, it is a very kind of um, dis disorientating. Right. There we are. Look at that! I don't have a uh, a, a baby son as depicted like that. Yeah, indeed. I do have a, uh, I do have a uh, a daughter in reality, mm. and uh, you know, if I if I you know, if I went up to you know, Kelly and did that in reality, then of course I'd be I'd be. Uh, Aggravated assault. Aggravated assault, stroke, sexual harassment. I mean, it depends on... You might be able to, you know, sort of uh, negotiate a lesser charge, probably. You've managed to get it sort of in the past, sort of got down to the point where they'll just take a cash sum and keep quiet? Yeah, exactly. I'm joking, by the way. If there are people listening... And I, I thought you things like, you've got to be careful with things yeah. like that. We're a bit more relaxed about... Um, about sort of sexual harassment in, in, yeah. in Britain. You, you can get away with a lot more of it before... Uh, people bring in lawyers. Should we just go through that list of directors again in case they've come yeah. into the commentary yeah. late? The yeah. sort of people we'd like yeah. to work with. Yeah. Do you think I've got a character actor's nose or a leading man's nose? I think it's your nose. I think when the time comes, I'm just going to have a chin tuck and then leave it at that. Now, can I say something here, and I don't mean to make you uncomfortable? You're in great shape in this film. Well, well no, 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 it's all relative, frankly. I mean, in terms of Americans, they would look at me and go, you know, my shoulders aren't square enough, you know, I'm not pumped up enough, there's no definition. OK, but... but compared with sort of pasty English guys, I suppose I'm more than... I'm slightly reasonable, but I'm very careful, because I do drape that towel around my neck to try and hide my bony collarbones, and I pull the towel up so you don't see my slight tummy. So um, I'm thinking all the time. Well, no, I remember thinking when I saw this, Steve's in good shape. He's put everything behind him. He's he's starting again, and he's he's got his act together. Mm. And you look, I don't look that good, you know. Shoulders I don't have round that definition. Okay. Yeah, well, I would say that's. Are you holding your stomach in there? Um, I think I may have forgotten for a second. <laughs> I like the clothes though, and I like the tops and stuff. You know. I do Ian look, Hart, cut my hair James Ian Fleet. Hart, uh, great Ian Hart. He was in, he's been in lots of things. He's John, John Lennon in Backbeat. Yeah. John Lennon. Yeah, and. Uh, John Lennon. 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 One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's right. <laughs> it's like, we're talking about Ian Hart, we can't bear. <laughs> Just suddenly you see an opportunity for ourselves to actually do some a little bit of performance. Let's stop talking about Ian Hart and talk about ourselves. When I met Ian Hart, I thought we got on like a house on fire. I, I love him that. But I thought he was going to be one of those very intense actors because his roles are quite edgy. In mm. fact, he's one of the biggest laughs you know, he is actually ever find. I might give him phone 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 him and see if he wants just to. signed a photo of himself as Professor Quirrell for my kids yeah yeah I know he's he's uh, he gets to he looks like someone who's really kind of 
happy, but yeah. he lacks that kind of neurosis. I think I think I have a lot of it, and you have a bit too. But maybe I have more than you think. Yeah, but you deal with it in a more you channel it into comedy, whereas I channel some of it into comedy, and the rest I just sort of brood about it. Yeah. A bit, really. I think that which is. Uh, yeah. No, I like this scene. I, I do like your line about. Um, uh, which is well within our reach, you mm. know, if we want to make it a comedy. Yeah. Greg Wise, there, he's a handsome chap. Oh, he is. Well, he was at the premiere of the night in my. Uh, he's very handsome. Emma Thompson's back back to him, didn't she? Yeah. Emma Thompson. She's, she's great, isn't she? She's well, Nanny McPhee. That's a proper actress for you. Yeah, it is actually. Well, she can do both, can she? Do the comedy. She's amazing. Yeah. Oh dear. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Northam, there he is. He's 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 great. That uh, uh, Jeremy. But he's not really playing no, Michael he, in this. No, That's important. He's not. To say. He's playing quite commodion. He's yeah. quite commodionly in it. And, and actual fact, um, watching him uh, in this, when I saw him at the premiere, I realised he's actually not as mis. I always think. Yeah. Oh, I know he's not miserable, but because he, he, he played in such a kind of slightly tired, he's brilliant portraying sort of a tired kind of um, uh, emotionally drained actor. Um, uh, sorry, a uh, director who's sort of who's weary of the whole process. Does it very well. This was a good scene to do because a lot of lo I was about to say a lot of lovely actors, but it's true. There's some, some terrific mm. actors in this there scene, are. all doing little bits, and you know, I'm mean, gonna oh. get the timing right. And mm. the bing, bong, bong it was really enjoyable. Did this bit mm. here, I like mm. well within our grasp. Mm. Yeah, I did, I did. I put that gesture in deliberately. Oh no, no, but wait a minute. The Ronnie Ancona yeah. down the front. He's quite scarily great. believable as sort of financier type person. What about, what about the Another shockingly beautiful actress. Yeah. Said, right? mm. Oh yeah. Quite striking. All. The, Cheekbone, cheekbones and bumps and curves, you know, she's got, yeah, the, got she's the lot. Got it all. Got it all. Yeah, she is lovely. Bit neurotic, though. Well, <laughs> she'd be the first. <laughs> would she? I don't know. Before we say this, would she be the yeah, first? No, of I Ronnie she would. She, would she'd laugh about it. She'd she won't listen to the commentary this far in, will no, she? She looks switched no. off. No, no, no. So now, this her. scene, very funny. A lot of people tell me this is their favourite scene. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I lost that top. That's my top as well. It was, yeah. 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 I don't know where it is. I really like yeah, it. I, I don't like... I don't know. Someone might be stealing my clothes. Do you want to try it with a yeah, real hot chest? Try, try it with a real one. Yeah, yeah I, did, I had to really go for this because it's, it's quite hard to... Um, Quite a tiring thing to do this. It is, and also to keep it going and knowing that am I stuck to all one shot? You know, should yeah. I should I get laughs? Uh, you know, am I overdoing it? At which know? point do you want to get the laughs? Yeah. Yeah. laughs? Should I quit now? Or should I keep doing more, more and more? It's like how long can you keep something going? Yeah. It's like are we still stuck in it? Still hasn't got it out. Yeah. You know? It's like am I pushing my lot or, or can I? I think it's very believable having seen it a trillion Cause times. Because you, you think well, actually, in fact, people do, it, you know, it, things do sometimes go on, mm. and. Uh, um, I want that try the line about not feel like you're trying to telegraph the comedy, but make it. Really... Fingers on my arsehole. So I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. Okay, no, I like this line. I'm you know, very sorry. But, you know, same for dinner first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that line because you see, what I'm I'm doing there. That Michael said. Sort of, what I like about it is it's all one shot. That. Yeah. So it's a proper little perf. Right. Oh yeah. Um, but um, is that well after the pain I paused because he was he, he he was saying a few things I paused because I wanted to pause to get that line taped for dinner first. Yeah. I made it like I was stumbling over the line because I wanted to get it nice and clean so people yeah. can hear it and go that's my funny line now you can have a little bit of you know a giggle at it. That's something um, you're very big <clears> on, isn't it? Is marking moments and and enunciation. An enunciation. Yeah, it's one of Steve's big bugbears. Big bugbears. I've seen you get cross with actors who don't enunciate. Oh Steve. my. Um, actually, people who are classically trained, n that's one of the things they don't fail. They might, they might be... You listen to, listen to Radio 4 drama, right? Mm. Totally unconvincing. <laughs> but, Not by God, they enunciate. <laughs> yeah. right? No, when it's good, it's very good, but when it's bad, it's absolutely but terrible. Do you know, but do you know what it is? When you tune the radio and you sort of go... You, you, you can... What? You, if it's really good acting, you shouldn't be able to tell the difference between someone who's yeah. just speaking on the radio and yeah. someone's acting. And why is it that you immediately know it's, an, it's you're seeing, witnessing drama? Because they're all breathy going... I heard from Jonathan again today. And you think, why do they feel the need to act like that? Just talk like a normal person. I'm afraid we've got some bad news. It's, uh, uh, that was Jonathan again. I'm afraid he's not in a good way. You know, it's, it's just Steve daft. Coogan was speaking earlier today about oh, his standard acting in British <laughs> radio. No, but anyway, anyway, they, they do enunciate. I'm telling you, I'm being positive about them. That's yeah. one thing they do well. Whereas, you know, you get lots of good comic actors who... Are believable, but you can't tell and them the same. And occasionally they'll, 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 they'll slur something, and, and you, the joke is lost mumble. completely. Mm. Very annoying. Yeah. Mm. 
I was going to say about James Fleet, who plays uh, the producer in this, that one of my favourite film jokes of all time is one of his in, in Four Weddings, when he's talking and he says, you know, all I ever wanted was to meet a, meet a nice girl, like the look of her, hope she liked the look of me, settle down, have kids. I mean, you know, it, it worked for mum and dad. Well, apart from the divorce. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Was that in Four Weddings? You remember that? Yeah, yeah. It's such a lovely line. That's great, that. Yeah. Just classic, and a Richard yeah. Curtis, a reverse yeah. at the end, yeah. but it's very funny. Yeah. I like the way that I completely believe your feelings towards this journalist. Uh, I've got to go to um, Presumably yeah. you've, you've had experiences. Uh, where you're not, 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 to talk not, to someone yeah, not, not, not dissimilar to this. Um, and you've got to be matey, because you call him buddy. And I notice you often call people buddy. Really? It's a kind of a shorthand if they're not that yeah. friendly. I don't yeah. have noticed mm, that. Mm, mm. Yeah. He, he is believably <laughs> horrible, isn't he? <laughs> he is <isn't here> <laughs> He's a lovely boy, though. Um, lovely boy. Um, I, sound right, I, sound like a, I sound like a right poof, don't I? Mankey, he's, a little, he's a lovely boy. Um, there's James, the owner of the line I just mentioned. Now, there's a lovely scene coming up, of course, which is the Gillian Anderson, which is about every ten minutes away. It's strange how that, work, that works so well, doesn't it? It's like clearly it's unreal. Kind, yeah. It's, it's yeah. uber-reality compared yeah. to surreality. Yeah. And I love Ian Hart's underplaying in this scene. Mm. Look, he's so kind of... Mm. Yeah, it's very good. I like the Charles the first thing here about having his head chopped off. <laughs> Do you? What, the line? Yeah. Don't you like that? It does nothing for me. It's like, oh, it's where he was beheaded the yeah. next day. Yeah. I think I'll have the lamb <sighs> So what are you doing today? Going to Ireland. Oh, yeah. To, to, with oh, Andrew yeah. Eaton to, 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 to um, introduce this film. Trying to get people to go and see it. To an Irish audience. Mm. Northern Irish audience of investors. <coughs> I got, I got nothing on today. Do you know what's interesting is that there were gen I did have a meeting with uh, in investors for this film, genuinely in reality, mm. and those film th those scenes were then um, uh, were then Michael then sort of introduced those scenes into the film, mm. even though it happened in reality. Because I did turn up in front of. Uh, well, an investor, not a group, and uh, did a little performance of what the film would be like. And did he then invest? And he laughed a lot, and that kind of... I think uh, Michael saw that as tipping the, the balance, because they were Andrew and Michael, and they said, Andrew and Michael, who are very vague, who are sort of vaguely impersonated by James and Jeremy here, even though they changed their names slightly. Um, and actually, uh, uh, Ian Hart, who's playing Frank Cottrell Boyce, who um, had his name changed on the credits because of a little difference he had with Michael. I think they're all friends now, but that's why he's, he's got a different um, a pseudonym on the end of the film. Uh, who is this actor? I don't know. I've never I've met him before. before. I don't know who he is. Never seen him before. No, so he's convincing. He, he's very convincing. I think he'll do well. Um, you could see him in those kind of professorial kind of roles, couldn't you? Yeah, he's very good at pretending to be really well educated. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're joking. It was Hugh we're joking. Laurie. It was Hugh Laurie, famous now, of course, for House. <laughs> now leapfrogged everyone, hasn't he, the bugger? I know, I didn't see that coming. I thought, that's, that's a low-down dirty trick. I thought, trick. well, he's out of the picture. I don't have to worry about him anymore. Suddenly, he comes back and bites <laughs> us all on the arse. <laughs> <laughs> um, Walter is indeed the uh, Walter is again. Uh, I used to do him on Spitting Image, actually. <laughs> Did you? He was on yours, was he? Yeah, he was, yeah. What you um, he's, he's great, isn't he? You could sit here all day talking about Stephen. So anyway, we're talking, so, mm. so 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 the, 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 when um the, when I did the investment thing, the, the investors, it was um it, it really was uh, a scene that took place in reality. The other thing that happened in reality was I was nervous about the way I was depicting I was depicted as myself in this 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 film, and said to Michael, in all honesty, I said, can I have a scene <laughs> with a, changing the baby's nappy? Oh, really? I said, if you put that in the film, I think that will redeem. And you say similar things. And I say, and he used that dialogue yeah. that I actually said in reality to have me talking about, about Walter, saying I think Walter should have a scene with the baby because it would redeem all his negative as yeah. aspects of him. In actual fact, um, and so Michael stole my line in reality and gave it to me to say about Walter, and actually did give me the scene with the baby. Changing the nappy, which actually does work because people do do, and it wasn't just like saying me, Steve Coogan. I want to come across more sympathetically. It, I actually thought that it, if, as a, as a protagonist in the film, in some ways, it, 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 it look, it, you know, people just think he's just irritating me and want to stop watching, and it just gives me a bit of 
Do you know what? Actually, having said that now, so it makes me seem more sympathetic. Now, actually, will have the reverse effect now, me having pointed it out. Mm. You should have. I should have kept, kept quiet strong. about it. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, I, know, I know somebody was writing. Uh, no, I have changed. I have changed babies' nappies in, in reality because people ask me. But for those of you who are interested, um, the, um, the 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 well, I'll, I'll use the vernacular. The, the poo on the baby's bum is uh, a combination of uh, Nutella and peanut butter. Yeah. Um, that and that is absolutely the truth. Well, I don't think you're making it up, Steve. I mean, uh, I don't think no. you have to qualify that with "that's the truth." I think mean, people can listen to this and go. He said it was Nutella and peanut butter. I don't know about I don't that. Know. Um, and um, the um, yeah, so you were about to say something. Now, I was going to say when you were saying about you wanted a scene where you were the baby and uh, actors wanting scenes so that they come across in a certain way. Mm. It reminded me of a lovely story. A friend of mine who wrote a script for a big Hollywood star who has to remain nameless. And one of the things that came back is he wants a scene where he's running while holding a gun. There has to be a scene where he runs, where he runs hold, hold, while holding, while a, holding gun. a gun. Yeah. Didn't specify whether he's running away or he's running to somebody, but he has to be holding a gun, visibly and holding a gun, while running. while running. While running. Yeah. The thing is, Rob, I identify with that. <laughs> the thing is, Rob, there's a part of me that actually thinks, what, a, what an idiot. There's another part of me that thinks, mm, I'd quite like to run with a gun as well. <laughs> Shirley's interesting because I don't think she, you know we're doing like versions of ourselves. I don't think yeah. the Shirley in this is anything like it's nothing the Shirley like that it. I know. No, it's she like created it. another character to be well, kind off, of Shirley off, Henderson, off, didn't yes, she? Yes, she did. Yeah, to be yeah. Shirley Henderson. Yeah. So, so she she is genuinely the most enigmatic. Yeah, one of the most exactly. Yeah. Met. And I and I and I do I kind of I really would like to work with her again. I think she's the most. I just I I, I think she's. I'm sounding all kind of lovely now, but I think she's wonderful, and she's got this 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 kind of alluring quality. I need I need to work with her again. I must work with her. Um, this is the famous five screen scene. Yeah, uh, the, the, that's become now famous in the small number of people who've seen the film. Yeah. So I say far. famous. I use that word wrongly. Um, this is, I should have said this is the five yeah. scene screen yeah. scene. Now, the general reaction from critics has been very, very positive, but we think there's a little going to be a little mini backlash, don't we? Because as we record this, the film opens the day after tomorrow. Yeah, so we think it's going to be a mini backlash from some of the clever papers who kind of read all the hype that there's been so far in the press and will react against it. Yeah. Um, principally, I think Cosmo Landisman. Oh, in yeah, the he, was, he won't like it in the Sunday. No, he, we think he's going to slag it off, but I think that's because his wife left him for another woman, and uh, and he's all his negative reviews are a way of him exercising that a kind of catharsis for him. Yeah. Um, and if the if if uh, if anyone cuts that from from this commentary, then they're cowards, <clears throat> or or very clever, or very clever, depending on your point of view. See, that's not Shirley being Shirley. No, that's nothing like Shirley. She's. No. I love the way she does that strange thing with her mouth. It's sort of uh, like she's. I don't know. It's strange. I like this. That's just like shameless kind of sh shameless vaudeville musical yeah. sort of like. <laughs> but you, you, uh, stuff like that's great if you can if you can if you can sort of you know, make it sort yeah. of believable. Have you heard the news? They're trying to get Gillian Anderson. Oh, I, I like this. this. I like this. I like this. Like it. Really, I like the time it. It's I was great. unhappy with it. No, but I no, like it no. Now. Because it's got. It's not over self-conscious, no. and you, you. It's got a naturalness to it. This is Gillian Anderson. I think the woman's an angel. I've got all it's of the great. We've got to get some work out of this. <laughs> Come on. For, you know what I mean? It's, it's pretty good. Some of this stuff. You think someone offers a job? So it was Alexander uh, Payne, uh, Coppola, we would be quite happy. Yeah. Sophia. Sophia. I've worked, I've worked, I've worked with Sophia. So we need the dad now. Um, and I'd still go with Sophia. Um, I'd love to work with Sophia. I'm not, I'm not dissing like, I've worked with her already on, on, already on Marion Antoinette. I just exactly. I'd like to work with her next time and have a slightly bigger part, even though I'm grateful for the part that she gave me in Marion Antoinette. I'd just like to work with her in a more substantial yeah. way. So there's that. Paul Thomas Anderson. We Paul Thomas Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. I'd love to work with him. Yeah. Wes Anderson. Wes, any of the Anderson. Jerry uh, Anderson, if he wants uh, to do a remake uh, of Captain Alexander Scarlet. Alexander Payne and um, David O. Russell. Uh, David O. Russell. Um, you know, you know, some hey, of the comedy guys, Jay Roach. Jay Roach, love to work with him. Jay Roach. Yeah. yeah, a lot of these people do know of me, but they kind of I think they're sort of at a loss. They just don't want to work with you. Yeah, they're, I, they're either at a loss with what to do with me, uh, can't really think of anything to do, or, or they they've heard they've had some misinformation <laughs> about me being difficult. <laughs> they've decided they actively don't want to work with me. <clears throat> Where are you? You're, you're kind of new kid on the block. <laughs> 
just don't know. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Shall right? we say what we were saying the other night with um, Jimmy about Woody Allen? Is that is that for public consumption, or do you think that should be kept to ourselves? Uh, yeah, I, I think if if you offend Woody Allen, the only person you're gonna it's gonna affect since your career is working with Woody Allen, and that's unlikely for either you or me. Well, so, so the story was we were we were at the. Uh, party for this and James Nesbitt fine fine fellow mm. I was there and he's in Woody Allen's latest film Match Point so the three of us were stood there mm. Mm. and he was talking mm. about it and uh, the experience and you said that you'd you know you oh yeah that I was late for meeting with him I met Woody Allen in Paris and he really doesn't do small talk he doesn't do any small talk I sort of came in and went oh sorry I'm late thinking you'd say oh, how was your journey or, or okay and I know he doesn't like small talk but he was like so he literally just said um, I was made a joke about having been a bit late, saying, "Sorry, um, perhaps I should just go now." Um, so I just go now. I'll, I'll leave, and I, try, I pretended to open the door. And he said, "Is, is, there, is there someone outside? Did, did you have a, a friend outside? Did you try and let in the, the room?" I went, no, "No, no." I was sort of making a joke, oh, saying that no. I was saying that I was late. And he went, "Oh." Oh, I see. Um, can you just go through there and read the lines, and then you know, come through and then read them? And I, you know, I'm just going to go up and put a little sort of camera there and just and pretend like I got a camera and just sort of film you. Is that okay? Went, yeah, sure. Okay. And then I went and I came back out through and read and tried to do my American accent. And he said, um, I, I finished it, and he went, Can you, you do it again? You know, look a little faster. And I did it again quicker. And after after I'd done it, he went, Okay, great. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> it's like and I went. Oh, okay. Well, uh, by then, thought he'd say, "Well, nice meeting you." Blah blah blah, or even some sort of thing. He went, okay, bye. And it was uh, it was one of the most disconcerting experiences of my life. But as you can see, it hasn't held me back. No. I picked myself up, dusted myself down, <laughs> and I think I've come back with great aplomb from the the scar that Woody Allen gave me. <laughs> this is the Roger Moore scene. The man has cost nothing. Sorry, I'll let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rob's scene. Rob, 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 Rob. Let's talk about you and Gillian Anderson. She's she's very beautiful, isn't she? She's married there, so. I'm quite. I'm saying nothing. Um, um, yes, this scene. Michael's idea to do it as Roger Moore because of the reference I think I'd made in the in the scene earlier where I say that you you base your acting on Roger Moore, and um, so we did this and. Um, it was quite fun. I, I enjoyed it. Although it was the only day I worked with Gillian was this day, and she had a lot of lines, as you can see. So we were stood around a very, very cold day. Sorry, Rob. I'm just texting someone. Um, right. With my, oh, I'm, I'm already. My head's already in my next project. Done. Done. Yeah. Done. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the Roger. The Roger no, tell me about the Roger. Michael asked you to do. Yeah, it Michael Roger said do it as Roger Moore, and and, and uh, it's a sort of measure of how much sort of um, faith you trust you have. Because I didn't know what he was on about. I didn't know why, but I didn't question. I just sort of did it, and uh, the impression's much better at this point than it is earlier on. I sort of grounded it again and gave the depth to it. Really, I can't say I noticed. Um, but I'll take your I word for it. I think if you, if you one day find the strength to look at other people's performances, you'll see that it is. It's better because there's more depth to it. Mm. It, no, it's 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 um, it's no. I, I mean, I do I do love your acting. It's very entertaining. A lot of energy. A lot of energy. Very entertaining. That kiss I give her is really unconvincing because I hadn't asked her before. I hadn't said before oh, really? that I'm going to kiss oh, you. And right. if you watch it again, I, yeah. I always cringe when I see that. Really? Because really? you see me be. Yeah. I felt that's what I, like I would do. Yeah. I like the speeding up and slowing down of this. Yeah. And also the big walled garden. Somehow it. Yeah. It kind of. I don't know. Michael's very clever. Do you sometimes think that Michael sort of. He's incredibly sophisticated and sort of gets exactly what he wants from people by pretending to sort of be quite passive. I think I think there's more going on than meets the eye. Yeah. Certainly, I, now, I would hope so. Yeah. Now, me or the naked in this, it's kind of like this was when I was reading this. I was thinking, is this just some great, huge kind of joke at my expense? And I don't realise I'm being an unwitting participant, <laughs> and and that's what the whole thing is. It's nothing. It, there was a certain paranoia about that. Um, uh, that was a horrible thing to shoot. That was, uh, that was, although it's superimposed there, it was actually in a, in a barn on its side, and a bloke with a big bucket of kind of wallpaper paste and so you weren't upside tepid, down. You're on your side. Tepid you? water, throwing it up, up me. And there, of course, there was a South Bank show uh, camera crew who literally at that time had a camera pointed up, was almost pointing a camera up my ass. I mean, that was as close as it got. I have to say that I, um, what's the name of the South Bank show guy who shot it? Archie. Archie, um, Archie, um, I, you know, I believe in honesty and I found your approach a bit creepy, to be honest. 
And I thought that I actually thought the South Bank show special on this, even though I love the South Bank show. I thought it was a bit poor. There you go, said it. I thought it was just—it didn't really illuminate the film in any way. It was just looked like it was trying to emulate what Michael's done in the film. Okay, I'll, I'll jump in at this. You point. can jump in and defend it, but I mean, I just thought—I just say, thought it was not one of the best South Bank shows I've ever seen. I thought it was a splendid <clears throat> piece of documentary making, um, one of the finest of its type. I thought Archie yeah. did a great job, and everybody on the South Bank show. From Lord Melbourne. I like Bragg the South. Sa- oh, um, come on. Listen, I love the South Bank show. I think it's brilliant. I just thought that particular episode was not one of the strongest. And I thought that it didn't really. People who saw it said to me, I didn't really get what the film was about. That's what it said to me afterwards. Almost universally, people who haven't seen it. So I don't think it shed a great deal of light. How do you think um, Archie feels now watching this commentary? We got a fight. All well, the way he's, he's been thought, thinking, are they Also, there's a lot of kind of things saying, oh, he, uh, he was trying to get gossip, like, oh, who, who's Steve shagging? Or, like, you know, there was a lot of that going on. Well, we were all doing that. Yeah, I know, but he was supposed to be there in a professional capacity, so... I understand you're hurt. Um, anyway, let's move on. I like your honesty. I've got to yeah. say, I'm a bit Good, shocked well, I don't care, I don't care, you know. This, people like... People, they get these commentaries, they just want people to be all nice and sweet and say benign things about yeah. everyone. You know, let's have a little bit of honesty in it. I do love this, the way this is lit. It's so... And yet, the blues this was the and... hardest scene. I remember this was a nighttime shoot, which went on forever, and you, there's a moment where I'm running up a hill shouting, I'm Spartacus, which I really... Mm. Was, it was... The sword was heavy, and... Oh. Hmm. It's like some Hollywood version of Tristram Shandy. And these guys are a bit odd, aren't they? These guys that do this. Interesting. In an earlier cut, there's a scene where I, I I I snog Naomi. Did you ever see that? Another one when I'm I'm near the stairs about to say good night, and we snog, and then yeah, I say I'm so, oh, sorry about last night. Yeah. And then the later in the final version, he cut that, so it's just me saying sorry about last night. So we're not quite sure what happened last night. Uh, Whereas the earlier version, you actually saw her jumping yeah. on me. Oh well, I always get the impression that you just kissed because you said, "What? Sorry that you kissed me, or sorry that you were drunk." So that for me says, "Oh well, they just kissed." Yeah, well, That's how I always mm, it. Was, it was a kind of a snog, that, but it was just a snog, and then and then and then yeah, and then I yes, go I do to bed. remember that cut. And I sort of knock into the paintings and go, "It's interesting right. how the paintings match the old furniture." Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, that I wonder was... if they put it on the DVD. I know it might be on here somewhere else. So, I thought, well, I thought that was quite really an like interesting scene. Uh, They're just mm. happy to like sit in a room and just look at I got told off by one of these historical reenactment people. I was using his sword and I, I stuck it in the ground. And he said that... You know uh, what? The air conditioning's still on in here and it's fucking freezing. You feel it? Yeah, and we, to be, we did ask it to be turned off before we started the commentary. And it's still freezing, it's still, it's still on. I think we should keep that comment about the air conditioning and the com- commentary. Uh, just like, yeah. just fuck them, Lily. Just fuck them, do you know what I mean? Fuck them. Yeah. She's in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, she is. Yeah, she'll be. She'll be great. She's um, she worked with Pierce Brosnan. I know. Yeah. Get to kiss three girls in this film. Not bad. <laughs> Do you like kissing girls in films? <laughs> <laughs> is there any part of you that just enjoys it on a purely visceral? I am Steve, and I'm kissing girl level, or is it all? Are you? No, all no, no. No, of course you. No, you, of course you're being. You, 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 but in in being in the moment, then you have to. Be, you're not, you're not being completely technical the whole time. Of course, there's a part of you, because you're in the moment, you're acting, that experiences a kiss. What about when you're kissing a girl that you don't really like? Um, Are there any girls <laughs> you, you don't like? <laughs> <laughs> past form would suggest that there aren't. Oh, please. Um, no, but seriously, though, because I had to do... Um, I have a, a certain criteria. Girl, it's just more flexible than other people's. <laughs> My criteria. <laughs> <laughs> My criteria is... I'm sorry. I wouldn't have thought you'd be the first one to do the Ronnie Corbett impression. <laughs> you surprised me. <laughs> um, yeah. No, if you get on well with someone, then it can be a lovely interlude in a film, I think. A little, a little bit of kissing. And whatever else may ensue, but if you don't, you're talking about as a, in, in the part. Yeah, in the part. I'm saying, mm. saying, you know, but as a person, mm. you know, you, it's, it's quite mm. nice to kiss an, an attractive girl. But if you do, if you're not getting on, if you, if you're kind of rubbing mm. up against each other the wrong way, mm. even slightly mm. bit of tension mm. there, then it's really awkward. Well, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes. Uh, I mean, they, they always say. Uh, well, they don't always say. But this I've is heard. my favourite bit of the film, though. Is it really? No. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. I've, oh yeah. I, I should have seen that one. I walked right into that. Imagine if it was. I love <laughs> seeing. A bit bloody creepy. <laughs> Yeah, I love this. <laughs> that bit there when you kiss him, you're, you're so tender. <laughs> oh, sorry, no. I really like that. Uh, I, 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 I feel I, it's going to go further. What, than I don't know what it is, but I, whenever I, any of my friends say, oh, dis- oh horrible seeing <laughs> you kiss, I just think, oh, come on, we've seen enough of that. Well, well, what's wrong with that? You know, I'm not a bad looking bloke, you know, and, uh, you know, yeah. God. I mean, it's horses for courses, isn't it, really? <laughs> That's no way to. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, you are a masterful lover here. <laughs> you really are. I mean, I'm just glad at the lighting decision, frankly. 
<laughs> near darkness. Thank you, Michael, for that choice. <laughs> Yeah, it's a nice shot. <clears throat> There's a lovely one coming up of a field, which is the last. It is. Quite... It, they are absolutely wonderful. Um... There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Jobs are Bobby, as we say up north. <laughs> Little baby. There we are. Here That's what are. happens. And look at mm. you there. Look at that body. That's you're in great shape. No, it's not. That it's, I'm glad he's of. Uh... You're being lit from above a little bit as well, which always helps with definite muscle definition. Does it? If Does you're it in a really? hotel bathroom and they've got those down lights, you can find a position where you can look like Stallone. Yeah, even <laughs> if you're not. Just hold your stomach in, puff your chest out. <laughs> if you must have done that sometimes. Yeah, of course that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And again, this for me was just, you know, cherry on the cake, that l last little bit there. Oh, when I say you're so lucky. Yeah, that's. I use that joke. That's a very funny really? joke. Yeah, I love that. It was, it was, you, did you make yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, was that it, yours? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've used that. I must have you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's you're very so funny. lucky. Yeah. yeah, that shot isn't that lovely? It, it is one card. Yeah. Isn't it? Uh, uh, I just feel I've got a slight feeling of sadness here. Look, I mean, look at that. It's, it's constable country. It's constable country. And it really... I thought it was all right. <laughs> oh, come on, Rob. Why is it above it? Um, this, yeah. this, it, it it's uh, it's no, just because these... this is very re reminiscent for us of the time because these are the buildings and the were we were. locations. I feel that's why I feel a little lovely. bit sad. I feel I feel like oh, I want to be back there. But yeah. there's something lovely about the fact that it's now it's sort of it's um you know it's uh. You want to be back making a low-budget, small yeah, British independent film? You will be. Yeah, it's immortalised, though, isn't it? Yeah. My hair's a bit shorter yeah. in this scene. I want, to, I want to get back and make another underfunded. It's not underfunded, it's just that, you know, that's always a bit of a struggle. Hey, that's the scarf I'm wearing right now as we speak. Really? Yeah. I'm never going to get rid of the clothes I wore in this film. <laughs> and keep them forever. <laughs> Lovely cardigan I got in this film, actually. They wanted it back from this, this company made it, and they... I wanted the cardigan back, and I, 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 I didn't. The thing that celebrities, uh, actors, sometimes do, that they keep things that yeah. they're loaned. Yeah. Because they think, what are they going to do? Get the police to go around the house and say, you know, give us the cardigan back. They think, actually, how can yes, we get it back? yes, they did. <laughs> That's what um, And yes, they did. It's four o'clock in the morning. Dogs, everything. <laughs> go, 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 go! <laughs> yeah. Abseil down the outside of the house. Ruin the rendering. That's a nice moment from me there. I quite like that. What you mean? That me saying well handled, I thought it was quite that wasn't it. That was, I improvised that. That wasn't yeah. in Michael that wasn't in Michael's mm. script. That yeah. was beyond him. Yeah, yeah. No, I know it's yeah. I shouldn't have said Lee Evans here. No, because uh, I know you shouldn't. Well, I no, I... Lee, Lee is Lee. Not not in the fact that he's because he's known kind of. Everywhere. You could have said Jerry Lewis. Yeah, I know. You could I know. Have said, there's a number of people you could have chosen. I always have my international head on when it comes to making yeah. references. And because he's British, it sounds like I'm having a go at him. Yeah. And you're I'm, actually having I'm a go. I'm really not. No, he's having a go. Because I think me. he's very funny. But yeah. um... Elizabeth Fergus. I, I sort of the weird thing is I sort of believe them when I watch it back. I sort of. I sort of don't believe they're actors in a way. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I sort of accept them as being yeah. part of the crew. It's really yeah. mm. historical, but not hysterical. Hey Joe, hello Steve. Uh, listen, I'll see you tomorrow. Hey Joe, I was going to say where are you going with that gun in your hand? But yeah, I think the sort of a, the Hendrix Foundation would probably charge us a million pounds. Or something. I don't know. The Hendrix Foundation. Jimmy's family. Thoughts with the family. Um, Kieran again. Yeah, hanging around like a bad smell. He's, it's, it's great. It's really good casting, isn't it? Yeah, it he's is. very, very convincing. He really is, yeah. I just want to do a really general piece. You know, the type of thing you do. That's why we had a little party. We had a little bit of a party there one night, didn't we? Some, I seem to remember in that room. Or was it just sort of catering at the end of the day? No, it was just some food. The life and opinions of Steve Coogan. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, just a sort of tidy. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um, yeah. But really, mm. uh, the, the, obviously, just become a father. Oh well. So yeah. I don't have not much else to say, is there really? Uh, what does it mean? To you? <coughs> hey, uh, it's <coughs> it was Alexander Payne. It was P.T. Anderson. Um, Coppola the Elder. And younger. Yeah. George Lucas. Do you know? Let's just just be realistic, shall we? Okay. Scorsese. I don't know. Scorsese. Scorsese. You know I mean. Um, Scorsese. You know, the Farrelly brothers. I mean, I don't want people to think that because this is kind of quite subtle that I won't do pretty broad yeah. physical stuff. Yeah. And I'm prepared to a certain extent to gross out, to do yeah. kind of a sort of a little bit of a gross... As long as there's a bit of intelligence there, I don't mind doing sort of gross out moments in films so that, the have the real, brothers, yeah, that have wit, yeah. have genuine yeah. wit. Yeah, Farrelly brothers. Yeah. Um... um little Tristan. <laughs> oh, I'll catch you later. OK, right. Well, he's got a bit of hairline than me. 
<laughs> She's a girl, actually. Oh, right. Uh, I think that's, um, yeah, no, I'm very into mm. female sizes. Everyone mic'd up. That's the real sound. Hey, Judea. Isn't it? Let's get it all locked Yeah. Okay, um, Byron, can we just get this moving now, thanks? Cheers. Oh. Hey. Oh. Um, quite Sellers like your nose. Oh, like a Sellers false nose, you mean? Like a. Yeah. Peter Sellers nose with a false nose. Yeah. yeah. Trying to do a character, doing character. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes, I'm doing a character. Mm, yes, very much so. You know, he used to talk like that. You know, Mike, he'd go and park him some, you know, you know, he'd say, well, you know, Mike, you know. And that's sort of well, you know, Mike, it's sort of like that, <laughs> trying to be sort of more sophisticated and mid-Atlantic than he actually was, you know. So trying, like a man tried to transform himself from this sort of provincial sort of thing. It's like, I don't know, it's like, um, I don't know, it's a, some people want to see themselves differently than the other, other people. I remember... Uh, I remember when uh, Burt Reynolds did all the sort of Hooper movies in the 80s. Uh, okay. uh, what's his name? Said uh, he's trying to be Cary Grant to uh, Barry Norman. Said he's trying to be Cary Grant. Why doesn't he just be Burt Reynolds? Sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, whereas I, I like this moment between us actually here because so do sort of, I. because it sort of shows that despite the uh, competitiveness, there's a sort of a, a kind of unspoken friendship. Yeah, that, 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 that is the only moment in the film. But it's good, and it, like but that, it's yeah. important, I think, because it yeah. sort of says that we kind of, it's, it's, mm. and I think it's sort of, often people, um, I think it's quite a British thing uh, to, because of the British reserve, but the way people show genuine sort of friendship here is rather than saying nice things like, oh, I really like you and you're a really nice person, you know, and I, I respect you so much and that's so funny and you're, you're a really talented guy. It's the same thing like we actually sort of say, we insult each other. Mm. And in a strange sort of way, that's a way of saying, you know, you're not a bad guy. Well, it would be nice of me sitting here, Steve Coogan. I love you. Yeah, and I, I was, I was I, I, but you know, that, that just weirds me out. I love you for who you are, faults and all. Yeah. I love you for your Listen, talent. Rob, if you weren't sitting there naked, I wouldn't feel so bad, but you know, in case anyone's forgot. I love tugging on your belt. <coughs> um, um, you're a complicated man. But I like that. Okay. I, I take you with the complications. Uh, take it at face value. It's a lovely face. And, uh, and uh, I'll probably always and love you. And, and, and you've got a lot of value. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the key words that I think, come up. I think this, commentary, this commentary peaked about 20 minutes ago, let's be honest. And it peaked 20 minutes in, I would say. Yeah, that's true. Keely Hawes. Yeah. Have we said how beautiful Keely is? We have. Now, see that baby's head there? Very, yeah. be very believable. But... um. Not a real baby, we hasten to add. Oh, God, no. Um, and not, re not, you know, weren't really clasping a baby's forceps. Can I also say, when I say Keely's beautiful, don't I don't, like I don't mean there. it in that sense of beautiful and not brilliant actress. Because yeah, sometimes you, you say beautiful. Yeah. If someone said, oh, isn't he a handsome actor? You'd think, well... I like the fact there's this build-up to sort of the bonding of the baby. And, and I just want Keely to be absolutely sure I'm not just saying the she's result beautiful. Of it is, is, it, the result yeah, okay. of it is that. Because yeah. I also think she's really, really, really... Don't talk over my fantastic. slapstick. Yeah, but I want to clear it up with, with Keely. That's all right, I hate her to think that I'm just seeing her as a... Okay. Can we quickly cover my physical comedy? Just oh, you did a lovely, a lovely, fall. Uh, lovely fall. Yeah. You didn't see it coming, do you? No, because I remember the first time I saw it, I laughed out loud. And then Shirley's, uh, Shirley's uh, lovely. Um... Now this is where the film unravels for me because who the hell is Kelly McDonald? What do you mean? Well, when it... you stand up here, she's there. Well, that's, um, but then, yeah, she says. Stands up and then I say, yeah, and, and I sort of say, yeah, I thought you were great, by the way. And you think, oh, well, so is there another... Exactly, is there another not? layer? But then, um, don't they say the scene with Steve... I think this it seems to have been the scene with Steve and the baby. Mm. So, and they say the scene with Steve and the baby. So, you, so all the talking. Steve so I think, stuff so I think, was, so I think, was filmed as think, well. So, yeah, so... So I don't it know really what. was the film that we were making. Well, it's, it's peculiar. I, I, do, I do kind of lose it a little bit. There. I lose it a bit. I sort of... Like I say, if you don't think about it too much, it's a very clever film. <clears throat> Raymond's had a trendy haircut since the filming, because this was a little Who? bit after Ray Wearing. Ah, played, yes, he uh, has, I'm pretty sure. Trim. That scene there, you see, that bit there. Mm. It's kind of peculiar. Mm. Uh, but that's me wishing that you know, she really was my girlfriend, which is you know, never going to you like You'd like a girlfriend like that, wouldn't you? I, I, I would, you know, I'd like to meet someone. Get it right. I thought the scene with Steve and the baby playing young Tristan would give us the emotion and still be 
true to the original story. Well, I always forget how short I am. I like this comment. I tell you what, I really like Naomi's t- talk about yeah. topping up her phone. So she's been really dull in real it's, life. It's, it's as well great, as in the film. isn't it? Yeah. It's got, really, really... Go, oh, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. She, yeah, that's really it's good. Really, you see a glimpse of it. Yeah. Oh, is that who she really is? Yeah. It's lovely, it's lovely uh, detail. So how many drinks do you have a day? I now, have... see there, Gillian's got an American accent. When I chatted to her, she had an English accent, as I recall. I like this. I keep ten pounds on it so that I can't stay on the phone long, so that I'm always just quickly off. It's great, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's lovely, lo- lovely uh, little moment. I don't know she's thinking about that beforehand. Now, this was a super scene to shoot, wasn't yeah. it? Do you remember this? Because yeah. you're sitting across the table from Stephen Fry, and I just went, oh, brilliant, because I, I didn't have much to do. I'm just yeah. sitting there watching. And you. I mean, As you know what, I do. I love writing comedy, but I, I do. It is great. It's lovely acting. I mean, it is such good fun acting. Yeah, it? you know, you hear people say, I prefer the writing is my favourite part. Oh, it's not. I love the getting well, on and doing it. Oh, you see, I, I do really, really do love writing. To me, it's this is kind of a. A, a, a kind of a grounding quality to it that I love. It was being in a room with someone else and writing and, and sort of mm. creating stuff from nothing. You know. Um, yeah, there is something lovely about having it then in your hand at the end of the process and going, you've built this. Yeah. But sitting with other really, really, you know, very good actors is also rewarding. Yeah, it is, absolutely. David Williams desperately tries to claw his way back into the film, but it's too late, mate. Too late. Hmm. Now, the oh, that's the sex scene. They tell me there'd be a sex scene, but they didn't say it'd be uh, quite like that. <laughs> oh, dear. There's got to be a joke there, Rob. Uh, no, it's gone. OK. You remind me of Les Dawson when you do those addresses to the camera like that. Your rhythms are very like Les Dawson. Yeah. Hmm. Baby was born, Obadiah hopes the cow would calf. Seeing another side of Williams there, aren't we? Hmm. It's quite nice, actually, seeing him sort of restrained. I'd like to see him restrained. <laughs> As I outlined in my letter to the court. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant in, no. letter, in a letter to him. Oh, I see. You're straight yeah, in yeah, yeah. Oh, that would have yeah. been funnier. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well done. Nice. Look at Stephen there. Look at that. Look, he's doing that. Is, I love that. Nah, he's wonderful. I'd love to do something else with him. I mean, I'd love to work with him again. I'd love to work with her again. I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to work. I like work. this. Look at you. Look, look. The two brothers. You're looking furious. Oh, sorry. Well, a slightly, slightly smirk at the end of it. You see, nearly lost it. Because you're a funny chap. Thank well, you very the reaction much. was. Uh... Thank you very much. Yeah, and that's it. There you go. The that's end. the end. Well, it yeah. was an enjoyable experience for us. It was. It was uh, very good. Cock and the, and the bull. It kind of feels like it's over now. Doing the commentary for the DVD really does sort of yeah. put the lid so, on it. Oh, and it's not over yet. There's, do, you, do we have to talk about this? I mean, talking <laughs> about us talking to each other, it's just. It's just, it's just really. It's, this is like that's both vanished up each year, other's yeah. arses. Gets big that's laughs. Year, yeah. Right yeah, it does. I mean, I do feel like you're, 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 you are, you know, you, you, you are sort of, keep, it, it is competitive. This is not like good acting improvisation. This is like competitive improvisation of the kind of like trying to trump each other. And I, I do, fight, I lose this battle, quite honestly. Because um, I keep trying to think of which you I think too much, whereas you kind of go with it. You, no, but I know, I know why that is. Right. So I don't know if I want to say on, um, on, on camera. Oh, oh. oh really? What, yeah, that you were. Yeah, that really? night. Yeah, I couldn't believe what you were doing. What, the night before this? No, this night. That we filmed oh, this late. See. We've been there for oh, hours. Oh, right, right. And you were getting ah, progressively more. Oh, right, I see. OK, fine, fine. Yeah. OK. Um, <coughs> yeah. Uh... And I sense yeah. blood. Yeah, oh, okay. Um, yeah, well, you did. You, you buried me. But the thing is, I do actually find you funny. So I feel. Um, I feel it's bit... funny, and and it, 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 I, what you're saying is absolutely true. To be serious, mm. right? Mm. But it is in the spirit of the film. So oh, I don't, it is. I don't oh, no, feel no, bad no, in no, that. No, I don't. Sense. I don't. I don't feel. Oh, uh, but I, no, because I feel. But I feel a bit like Dudley Moore when you know Dudley Moore and Peter. Cook, you know when Dudley Moore used to laugh a lot. Yeah. I, I did say this to your parents, and I saw them. Yeah. Uh, a little bit like uh, Dunham Moore used to just crack up a lot of P- uh, Peter Cook's uh, um, cleverness. But um, but it's, uh, I think it's a, a good nice piece of work. On at the end. It's, it's a, nice a very good piece of work. And it's it's um, it's better than having outtakes, which is sort of tediously, just absolutely tedious. You know, I mean, really, it's utter. Yeah. This, is, this is, I mean... <laughs> I'm not, that's not what I'm doing. I the fact that there's sort of it's slightly lacking in effect. There's sort of slight, sort of like, like there's a little bit of aggressiveness. To it. <laughs> yes, it makes it to me more appealing. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, I was worried here you were going to do a fantastic Pacino at this point, and you did a brilliant Pacino, but it wasn't fantastic. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. I wasn't that focused. I was just. Uh, I thought I've got to play by your rules. You, you, you know, it was your game. You know, it was certainly going. You know, <laughs> yeah, sort of following the ball really. <laughs> 
I regret when I say about Barbara Streisand, I say I look at her body of work. That's so cheap. I, if I could change one thing in my life, mm. I would take out that pause. It was horrible. Yeah, yeah, actually. Um, yeah, the Meshug, what's that? Jewish oh, the Meshugma, the Jewish thing. Yeah, it's good. That was, I very just thought, oh, he's really thinking on his feet. Yeah, that, that, that's yeah. good. But the bit before it, I look at her body of work, and whenever we're at a screening, I always cough at that point so people don't hear the pause. But it's not practical. I can't do that. I can't go around the country. So I'll have a little bit mm. of mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm mm, gonna take a little mm, bit from yeah. Yentl. I'm well, uh, together, uh, well, there we are. That's, anyway, that's, that's come to an end. That's come to an end. Uh, Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening so to I've our got, commentary. Uh, sorry, it wasn't more I've informative about the actual genuine techniques and processes that we used. Oh, uh, I can tell you something. Michael doesn't have a lunch break. He, he genuinely has rolling snacks where you have food every so often, so you don't get the post-lunch lull. There's a bit of information for mm. you. Yeah, no post lunch lol with Michael, and no trailers either. I mean, no trailers to to stay in, but there really there really isn't. If you're lucky, you get an umbrella and a Mac, and that's the truth. But there's a kind of camaraderie about that. It's kind of a a, a, a warlike quality. Just touch my teeth. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Thank you.